later. Okay, so welcome to this webinar, uh, which is all about is your can your DNA report tell you which diet is right for you? Um, so today, what I want to do is show you the Life Code GX report on metabolics um, and show you some of the potential of this report. Um, what it what it's uh, capable of showing you and what it can tell you that you can use uh, for the rest of your life as well as just now. Um, my name's Amanda King. I'm a naturopathic nutritionist. I specialize in nutrigenomics, which is the science of how we can see how your individual DNA can be used to tailor um, specifically a diet and lifestyle that works best for your biology um, and help you to avoid chronic disease and, and have a, as healthy and good a life as possible um, with hopefully as little effort as possible and no guesswork. Um, I run a private practice in France um, and I also work with a private online clinic too. Um, okay, so just to give you an idea um, about how this works, um, I will show you a sample report. Um, I'll run through how, how to read them in a very basic kind of a way um, and explain to you in um, standard terms what, um, what the information on this particular report means for that individual. Um, and then at the end, the, the participants who have who are in the background on this recording will have the opportunity to um, ask any questions that they feel might be relevant. OK, so I'm going to go to sharing a screen now. Um, and uh, uh, I will just bring that up, which wonderfully has just disappeared. There it is. So move that to there and then share. OK. OK, so hopefully you can see the Metabolics report. Um, I only um, work with reports from Life Code GX. Um, they're based in England. Um, I really love their reports. I love the way that they're presented. They're really user friendly. Um, but also what I really value is the fact that they destroy your DNA. Um, they don't identify you with your, your DNA. It's all kept completely private and your um, information and, and sample are all destroyed after six months. So um, in a way, it's a, a detriment almost to the company because you cannot then go into order anything else from them after six months. But it's also of benefit. And I feel it's quite an ethical way to practice because um, there's no way that that information would ever be sold or get into the wrong hands um, or be used for any purposes other than simply um, allowing your nutritionist to look at your um, report. OK, so this individual um, has had this metabolics report. And so what just as a brief overview, um, your metabolism is um, the processes in your body that are responsible for um, your appetite, your digestion, how you process nutrients. And, um, and also it can show us information about cancer, diabetes, pathways, cardiovascular disease, cholesterol, um, metabolism of fats and sugars, um, and essentially which kind of a diet will work best for your biology. Um, and believe me, there are some interesting, interesting um, results that come up here that we wouldn't necessarily expect. And so, um, in fact, you can see here, um, it does say appetite regulation, um, how you sense nutrients, sugar and fat metabolism, how you metabolize fats and how you, whether you're able to process cholesterol and mitochondria, which in your cells, um, you have mitochondria, which um, are effectively the batteries of your body. Um, they create energy and inflammation. Most of us have heard about inflammation these days, and it's a root cause of illness um, across many different chronic diseases. Um, so ideally, we reduce inflammation as much as possible. And so you can see here with appetite regulation in this individual um, on this side, if we split the page down the middle, you can see that this is the low energy or fasted state. So with fasted, we don't necessarily mean um, you know, uh, fasting for seven days on water or anything extreme like that. It can be simply you haven't eaten for 12 hours um, or even four hours. And what happens within your body at that time? Um, intermittent fasting is something I tend to recommend depending on the individual, because obviously it may not work for everybody in the same way. <laughs> Excuse me. 
but intermittent fasting also applies for this pathway. And then again here, high energy and the fed state. So um, what happens to the person in that state um, is, you know, do we need to address it? So the way you can see here that uh, there are words here like ghrelin and leptin. These are the hormones, um, which I will explain to you. And then under here, you have um, some codes, F-A-A-H. That's actually the, the coding for a specific gene, which I will explain to you. I won't have time to explain all of the genes, but I can explain as an overview some of the main ones. FTO is a gene. LEPR is a gene. You don't need to know all the names of the genes. It's just that you can understand what it is that you're looking at here. And in here, you can see um, olive oil here is an in inhibitor of that gene, which means it slows down the activity. So um, the other ones that are in purple, the omega-6, cannabinoids, daylight, those are inducers of that gene. So they will make that gene upregulate and work faster. Um, so that you get a, a basic understanding here. So, and it's the same for all of these, whether they induce or inhibit, um, whether that's a good or a bad thing really depends on the gene itself. Um, so obviously if it's a gene for cancer, we would like to inhibit that. But if it's a gene for satiety and feeling full, we would like to induce that probably, depending on the individual. So it, it's never the same. You always interpret in terms of the individual and what you're looking at. So here at the top, you can see the FTO gene on this individual, it's upregulated and we give it a traffic light system. So for this person, they've got the red, which is the worst kind and a double upregulated. So if you remember from a school biology classes, you inherit a gene from each parent. So in this case, this individual has inherited the worst variety of gene for appetite from each parent. And so this person, you can see the arrow always points towards ghrelin, but it's blocked at leptin, which which means that if the FTO gene is upregulated, they're always going to be shifting across to ghrelin. And when we think of ghrelin as a hormone, gr for ghrelin, gr for greedy. So ghrelin is an appetite hormone. It's the hormone that's released when you're hungry. And also, if you have this variation, this person is always going to be shifting across to feeling hungry. And so you can see here inhibitors of that gene are rhubarb and green tea. And so for this person, we will probably be saying uh, that they need to have rhubarb and apple compote, for example, or rhubarb regularly to inhibit their appetite. And green tea regularly throughout the day is going to be a good thing for this individual because they're not they're going to struggle to control their appetite um, and just just by virtue of their genes. Going a bit further down, though, you can see that their ghrelin gene has um, actually no variation, the best version of. So once they're in ghrelin, there won't be any additional um, activity on that gene. Once they're fed and they're feeling full, again here, leptin, this is a satiety hormone. And again, there are no variations on that gene. So as long as this individual is making sure they eat healthy, decent foods, they will definitely have a predisposition to more hunger and wanting to eat more. But as long as they make sure they're eating the right kinds of foods, they won't have a continued problem with that. So that gives you some idea about, so if, for example, you're an individual with a red a variation on the FTO and a red on the FAH and LEPR, we know that your appetite's really disordered and we know we're going to have to work really hard to make sure that we limit omega-6s in your diet and that we have more olive oil and that here on this side, to, to induce that gene, we make sure that we support your sleep pathways. And there are other reports that show all sorts of things about how well you, you're able to sleep, how well you produce the right hormones for sleep, um, and how well you process omega-3s, for example. Um, so we this is just a tiny, tiny part of what, what we can actually do with these. Um, so scrolling down here, just looking through these, um, BDNF, uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, is um, a really important, um, in fact, lots of people who do biohacking try to induce this gene. This individual is, um, they've got a good version of this gene, but it's still, with, with a poor diet and lifestyle, um, that can still be downregulated. And this is the gene for creating new pathways in the brain. So for increasing neurons and for longevity and for increasing um, cognitive function. Lots of people try to induce that to effectively have more smarts. 
and so exercise, regular turmeric, green tea again for this person and dopamine, which is a feel good hormone, which is on a different set of pathways. So we already can see based on two genes that green tea is really good for this person. And studies have shown that if you take half a teaspoon of uh, teaspoon of turmeric every day, that you can increase BDNF by 50 percent in a month. So if you had a red on this and you really felt that combined with other things, you were struggling to sleep and you suffered with brain fog all the time and chronic fatigue and you were really struggling with your memory and you wanted to do something about that, then actually including these things in your diet should have a really noticeable effect after one month. And we would know to target that because you might have a red upregulate, a downregulated uh, variant of this gene and so that we can specifically target you as an individual with that. Moving on here to the nutrient sensing. So when we talk about the AMPK versus the mTOR pathway, in general, the AMPK pathway is the cleanup pathway. So this is kind of longevity. Um, you can see here SIRT, this stands for sirtuins, and this particular gene in this individual is on amber. So they have a limited ability, not the worst, but a limited ability to create the right kinds of molecules in the body that will do the clear up job effectively. And there's a lot of clearing up that needs to be done in the body. I mean, um, gosh, loads of things can can uh, be, be needing to be cleared up. So we have toxins, heavy metals. You might have um, you might have been exposed to mercury as a result of fillings um, and that may continue to be leaching into the body. You might have um, too much iron, which is really unhealthy for men and can lead to all sorts of things like Parkinson's disease. In fact, it's a risk factor for and Alzheimer's. Um, you might find that you um, have too much oxidative stress or you, you've had a really unhealthy diet, but you've just had a health scare. So you actually now want to try to reverse some of the damage that some of the damage will be irreversible if you've been doing something for too long. But a lot of it can be dealt with. And what you would want to do 100 percent is activate and increase the activity of the sirtuin pathway. Um, so there are different ways of doing that. But the whole AMP cap pathway is fat burning effectively. So for this individual to kickstart fat, bur fat burning, ADIPOQ stands for adiponectin. And what we would like to do then, um, say, for example, this person would have a red, um, a red, a red variant on their gene is again curcumin and making sure that they have Thai food or, or curries, but that they have a good amount of dried ginger, dried turmeric and chili in their diet um, as long as they like it and they don't have any allergies, obviously. Um, a turmeric latte, latte with ginger every morning could be a really great shout for somebody with a variant that's downregulated on this and especially if they were facing obesity or something like that. Um, and so, again, inducers of this pathway are exercise, intermittent fasting, again, drinking green tea, quercetin, that's apples, onions. Um, and for individuals with diabetes, they might be taking metformin, but, uh, you know, berberin is uh, from the golden seal plant. Um, or Barbary, and that is, um, it runs along the same pathway as you can see as metformin. So for some individuals who want to go down a natural route, that can be a better shout. Um, again, moving down here, um, one of the reasons they say why women are living longer than men is due to oestrogen. And you can see that oestrogen is an inducer of FOXO3. This individual actually has a really healthy upregulated version of that. And so oestrogen um, will be inducing that and promoting longevity for that individual. Over here, you can see that PGC1 alpha uh, is very down regulated. So for this person, regular, consistent, but moderate exercise will benefit them. And also making sure they have cold showers on a morning or they get cold exposure if they dare. Um, so those th those sorts of things are the reasons why lots of the lots of people like Tony Robbins or uh, Dave Asprey, some of the top um, Marcus Obrey. These are the names of people who are in the um, health sphere at the moment and who practice a lot of these things publicly. I mean, they they promote them. And these are the reasons why. And so when we go across to the other side, this while this is the pathway that um, induces um, anabolic growth effectively. So when bodybuilders or anybody doing any exercise wants to put muscle on, this is the pathway that's activated. Equally, this also is the pathway that um, promotes cancer and diabetes. And so you 
may if you have other cancer markers in your uh, genetic report and if there's a history of cancer in the family or diabetes or you, indeed you've been diagnosed with it you might want to start thinking about inducing the AMPK pathway and inhibiting the mTOR pathway so the inhibitors are olive oil and um, olive oil is a fantastic medicine which you you know if you add it to all of your meals a tablespoon will inhibit the activity here but you would see along other pathways that it would um, work really in a beneficial way for individuals there as well um, and inducers of that are too much protein but too much is really quite a lot glucose which is sugar that's no surprise to people who understand that um, cancer is um, fed by sugar and insulin which is for many people who are aware of how diabetes works sugar and insulin are uh, potent causes of diabetes and so moving further down here um, just to give you some ideas about how things are working how we're going down yeah, so I'll, I'll save that for last. So with the sugar metabolism, again, this is diabetes. Um, this, is, this is important for diabetes. Here, this particular gene, if it's upregulated, um, it can be a marker for higher insulin um, and insulin resistance then. And again, inhibitors of that are turmeric flavonoids from like the, the white parts of orange and, and lots of different um, vegetables and green tea again for this person just based on theirs it's not the same for everybody again to um, to induce this pathway uh, to induce the insulin pathway stress is a big inducer sugar again and inflammation and so what we would do with this person is look at all of the other markers to find out how to minimize inflammation in the body which foods are going to work for them over here, you can see for this person that rosemary and sage will inhibit the action. Um, this is actually um, a gene that um, it stops, uh, it moves fats into cells instead of sugar, which means that if you, um, have we done fats? Fats is the next one. So for this person, if they cannot move fats well across the, um, from the blood, you can see the blood into the cell, um, then, or if they can't move sugar ac across, this will actually move fats across instead of sugar and it will stop sugar from getting into the cell for energy. And what that means is that sugar then stays in the bloodstream, raising blood sugar levels, raising insulin levels and contributing to what we would call um, pancreatic beta cell um, resistance. So it's decreased sensitivity in the pancreas to insulin, which then leads to diabetes, um, which that's effectively how it starts. And so moving on down this pathway, they have a decreased ability to move sugar out of the blood into the cell. So there is an increased uh, risk of, of potentially diabetes. Um, but you can see here that with some of these other genes that this individual still can metabolize glucose quite well. Uh, sorry, that means they can use glucose for energy. So um, you can't look at one cell, one gene and say it's all over. We look at everything in in um, in tandem, everything is a, a full picture. Um, and so you can see here that actually other pathways are working very well. And if this wasn't working well, this, this person would have a need for more magnesium and more vitamin A and more B vitamins. Um, so finally, moving on to the fat metabolism. So for this individual, we can see that a ketogenic diet is a really bad idea. They are unable to move fats well at all from the blood into the cell. So for them, if they have a high fat diet, which is normally and, and I've done it myself, promoting a high fat diet as a healthy diet, which in general, it you know, it can be and is. But for this person, it isn't because they cannot move cells. You can see they've got a variant on this CD36 gene, double down regulated, where they don't move move fats into cells to be turned into energy. So for them, they need to be considering a lower fat diet and a lower sugar diet. So for them, a high protein diet is going to be more beneficial. Um, and that's one of the ways that we get to see how this works for the for the individual. Um, do I need to really go in here? You can see that lipogenesis, that's how um, how fat is created in the body, how fat is stored. And this is highly upregulated for this individual. So they have a quite a high disposition to getting fat laid 
laying fat cells down basically to storing fat and putting weight on effectively and but they do have a high ability to lipolysis to burn that fat for energy too so this person will put weight on if if they eat a lot of unhealthy foods or if they eat too much but they will definitely be able to mobilize those fats for energy if they work out so um you can see that for them exercise adrenaline it, again that comes from exercise hopefully not stress um and a little bit of caffeine so the green tea for them is going to be a really good thing to help fat burn and so <clears throat> i'm just going to go finally onto the cholesterol and bile uh, section um, there might be one after actually. So you can see here this person. So the LDLR gene um, takes 70 percent of the low density lipoprotein cholesterol out of the blood. And for this person, they've got a, um, a really reduced ability to do that. In addition to that, they have a, va a really heavily reduced ability to produce bile acids and bile acids are produced by the body to emulsify fat. So they actually break down fat in the body. So it's a double whammy for this person. In fact, it's a triple whammy. If they have high fat in the, in the body, they cannot produce if enough bile acids to metabolize, to, to um, break down that fat. And they also can't get it out of the blood. So this person has a risk of heart disease and high cholesterol and cardiovascular disease if they eat a high fat diet. So they need to not have that kind of a diet. They need to minimize the amount of fat. And when they eat fats, <clears throat> excuse me, when they eat fats, they need to make sure that it's olive oil, which we saw earlier inhibits other pathways that we want to inhibit. And they need to make sure they're not eating things like pasties and um, uh, omega -th omega-6 oils, which are sunflower oil and um rapeseed oil those are really unhealthy really bad for the body we need to get those out also barbecued food with um, perhaps uh, something called AGEs advanced glycation end products which would be transformed fats and no margarines no bad fats nothing like that this person would have serious problems if they continued to eat that that kind of food uh, what we do know is that because they will still need to have fats in their diet Having oats in the diet and having magnesium taurate, which includes taurine, will help them, and also green tea. So working with a health professional for this individual would mean that they would be able to target their biology by including supplements that will help them to create the bile acids that they need to be able to emulsify the fats, the good fats that they, they need in their diet without continuing to cause a risk of heart disease later on. Um, and then do I need to? So this this person has an increased risk of inflammation. We can inhibit that by making sure that they take a Mediterranean diet. So a Mediterranean style non ketogenic diet would work well for this person with high protein and including a lot of turmeric. Again, a uh, lots of omega threes and fish, green tea again. So we can see a pattern emerging here. <clears throat> and so there's a lot more to it. But um, that gives you an idea. If you were to buy one of these reports, each individual gene is explained and what to do. So you can see here with the FTO, which was the first one we looked at, which makes the person more hungry, that it says here they tend to weigh more on average three kilos more than the, the wild, which is the wild human type and protein diet and complex carbohydrates, which um, for this individual would be from vegetables, not from grains, really. That would be preferable to a high fat diet and having rhubarb and green tea in the diet would inhibit, would make, would basically mean they weren't, wouldn't be as hungry. So I'm going to end there because we've got to, I, I said this would be a half an hour long, um, uh, webinar so that's me stopping the share I don't know if anybody wants to come in with any questions so, um, Amanda Mark has some questions good Hi, Amanda, at the beginning uh, at the beginning you mentioned um, fasting and fed the, the two pathways at the beginning yeah does that mean you're taking two samples of DNA specifically no, we... one with that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, no, one sample of DNA is taken. So it's your entire DNA that is profiled. Uh, so with that, so the way that it works, just to give you an idea, is it's basically like a cotton bud. 
and you it's it's a very stable sample too there's no invasive it's very uninvasive and you just rub that on the inside of your cheek so it collects cheek cells and then it's put into a stabilizing capsule and sent off to england um, and then the lab in england will profile the, the dna and then they will send me the information um, along with the reports to interpret and then the reports i would send you the reports too and um, there's a lot more than this um that, that potentially well, almost certainly would be relevant, but this is the biggest, most comprehensive report they do. It's a, a really good one. Um, and so it's just the one, one genetic sample. And then from that, everything can be found. So we can, what we do then is we interpret those genes and we put them into the relevant flow charts so that you can see without having to have a degree in biochemistry, you can see clearly what they are. And it tells you at the end as well, because, um, you know, you're not expected to know what these things are. So it tells you at the end what each of the genes are, what they do. You can scribble your notes all over it and then you know what you've got to do. Um, but when you buy the reports, um, what I do is I do spend time with you. So I would actually do a, an independent call uh, with you and explain to you what you need to do. And I also provide a brief report to my patients as well so that they can see. I just tell them this is what you have to do with your diet. This is what you need to stop doing. And then they know. So it's a lot simpler. Any more questions? I hope that answered it. Yes, it did. Thank you very much. Good. How long does this so, process take? Yep. Yeah, uh, so the process takes, um, it's two weeks from when they receive your sample. So um, once, they, once they've got it, that's two weeks to the reports. And then, it, you know, I need about a week to go through your report generally. So about three weeks. Um, I tend not to like to send the reports directly to patients because they are complicated. And sometimes, you know, for example, one gene may say you have a higher risk of cancer and that can put the fear of God into people when in fact, when in red in conjunction with everything else, the risk of cancer is pretty minimal, especially if their diet includes X, Y and Z. But, you know, um, it's important to <clears throat> it's important to work with somebody who understands how to interpret all of the reports. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. And, uh, Amanda, when um, we went through the menopause one so it's one sample and then there are a number of reports underneath that that can be generated can you go through the what they are again yeah i can actually um so what i might just briefly do then since you've asked them for the benefit of everybody else um is just briefly show you them um have you got time for me to do that it might take about another 10 to yeah. 15 minutes <laughs> yeah no way. okay we're good thank you fine okay so uh, we, in fact, should I go onto the Life Code GX online? If you, yeah, no, I'll I'll show you the individual reports. I think, okay, so the basic report really, which is the foundational report, is the nutrient core. I'm just going to try and show you that now. Uh, share. So the nutrient core report. And I am literally going to whiz through it. Um, so I'm yeah. sorry, um, I will do other webinars on each individual one. So with these, this shows you your food response to gluten. So when you have a gluten intolerance, if you go through the medical route, then you need to do you need to eat gluten, which can cause all kinds of problems. Um, ideally, it's better not to eat gluten if you've got a really big gluten sensitivity or uh, intolerance. Um, it shows you your lactose intolerance, caffeine, microbiome diversity, your need for A, B9, B12, C, D, K and glutathione. Well, to be honest with you, that might not mean a lot to you right now, but I'll, I'll give you an example about why this might be so important. So lactose intolerant. Yes, you might say that's very interesting. Um, again, you might say this is because it gives you your risk of celiac disease or actually of autoimmune disease. If that runs in the family, that might speak to you. Again, it shows whether you're more likely to have the protective bacteria in your gut. It doesn't tell you what your situation is right now, but we would be able to understand that with diagnostics from your doctor and with me having the consultation to understand what your diet and lifestyle is doing. So all of that together represents an extremely powerful amount of information for you to then move forward into your life, knowing exactly what's going on and what you need to do about it. Uh, there are, that's the thing is there's no guesswork and, you know, you can only start where you are. Um, 
I've done these for my kids because intervention as early as possible is the way forward, but um, that's the way it is. So again, in sensitivity to caffeine, this one's a particularly interesting one with the vitamin A. You need it for your immune system. You need it for eyesight. Um, you need it for um, all kinds of processes in the body. Um, you can see here that this individual cannot convert that well um, something called beta carotene, beta carotene um, gene into retinol, which is vitamin A. So um, orange fruits and vegetables, orange vegetables really contain beta carotene. And if you're vegan or vegetarian and you don't eat fish, um, eggs or liver or, or meat, then you're not getting the formed version of, beta, of, of vitamin A, which is retinol, which is the only version that is useful for the body you're relying on your body being able to convert beta carotene from vegetables into vitamin A. And if you look, it, it actually really, I find it irritating is not strong enough, um, but I don't like it at all when um, supplements companies sell vegan products like vegan collagen or vegan vitamin A um, because it's misleading. And for people who do not understand that it isn't the formed version of vitamin A, it's the it's beta carotene. And so you can see here that this individual is a poor converter. And imagine if that was a red, if they were a really poor converter, there isn't there aren't enough vegetables that it's possible for a human being to eat for that person to be able to convert enough beta carotene into vitamin A. They need to have the animal products the animal, uh, yeah, they need the animal foods in order to have adequate amounts for their biology. And so I find that to be an extremely important fact. Um, first of all, I'm not an advocate for vegan diets. I don't believe that they are not healthy for, for humans. Um, and so I, that's one of my very strong positions as a nutritionist. And um, for those people who do choose to have a vegan diet and who are aware of that, they need to be aware that they are taking this risk with their health. And so, again, it shows you B vitamins if you're suffering with low energy, uh, MTHFR, which always raises a few eyebrows. This gene is um, uh, yeah, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. So basically it's for um, energy and how you create energy within the body. Um, it's extremely important. This individual has a, a lower ability to absorb B12. So they have a massively increased need for B12, which again is coming in, it's coming from animal foods. So if this person is vegan, they've got problems. Um, again, you can see vitamin D, they, they're going to need to have a high level of vitamin D for the rest of their life, because even if their blood shows a good amount of vitamin D, they can only use 40% of that. So, it, you know, it, with this information, we know how to supplement you. Um, this is information you can't really do without. Um, this glutathione is the master detoxifier. And if they don't have, uh, I found out that I don't even have the glutathione gene. And so now I know I'm supplementing glutathione for the rest of my life. It's just information like that. If once you know what you what you need to know, it's a no brainer. You you really if you can get this, get it because um, it it will change the way you eat eat and supplement for the rest of your life. Um, is there any? In fact, I'll show you the APOE report because this is the Alzheimer's risk report. It's quick to whiz through. Um, for this individual, the Alzheimer's risk is most common, but I happen to know that this individual has Alzheimer's on both sides of grandparents. So um, it shows that there is a very little risk of Alzheimer's or very neutral. Um, some people do get the highest risk and they need to do something about that. What it shows for this person is that they're missing the glutathione gene. Um, they do have one. But if this person is exposed to mold and heavy metals um, like cadmium or um, you know if they're in a busy city and they're always inhaling uh, car exhaust fumes and uh, they've got fillings and they're eating a lot of tuna and you know there's wherever the heavy metals are they've got a really reduced ability to detoxify that and if Alzheimer's is in the family on both sides they might develop Alzheimer's anyway because um, it says here it does tell you actually somewhere um, 
Ah, oh, there we are. So the vile toxic type of Alzheimer's disease is atypical. Um, although there is a family history with this individual, it's more often in the E3 carriers. And so, and also it follows a big period of stress or menopause. So if, if this person is female and they have a family history, the E3 may still mean that they get it. So that's why um, what they need to do is have supplement glutathione make sure that they don't live in an area with high toxicity make sure they have their mercury fillings taken out don't eat tuna make sure that their detoxification pathways are open so moving on to detoxification there is a report that shows us how the body detoxifies um where is it though it's not there hang on a minute uh sorry detoxification okay I'll quickly read through that. I know it's fascinating and I, I know I understand that you just want to see them, uh, but I'll have to whiz through. So this shows again uh, your detoxification of alcohol um, for this individual. They're fine. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> um, uh, mold detoxification. They detoxify mold, including in peanuts very quickly. Are you there? Sorry, did you say something? No, no. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. No problem. So, um, yeah, so they detoxify mold, black mold, uh, orange mold and oranges really quickly into a highly toxic metabolite called AFBO. But they can't detoxify that toxicity away. So they need to avoid they need to be really avoiding uh, molds and um, uh, not being in moldy environments. So they're going to have some health problems um, again, how well they detoxify. Uh, diclofenac um oh gosh trying to remember all the others um any uh, aspirin ibuprofen any of the other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs um it tells us if they have to take them it tells us how to support their body to make sure that they get um uh, the most detoxification the least toxicity again paracetamol is the number one cause of liver toxicity in the world it's touted as a health uh, as a, a, a benign non-toxic drug when in fact it's highly hepatotoxic it's very damaging to the liver and if a person cannot detoxify it napqi is a really toxic sub substance that's created um, and so this person has a vastly reduced ability to detoxify napqi so they shouldn't be taking paracetamol or if they have to then they need to be supporting their glucuronidation pathway heavily here you can see because that's the route they need to get it out of the body with um pah polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons this is basically barbecue cigarette smoke all of the uh, log burning fireware in france so this is the smoke from the wood if you cannot detoxify that well and you're going to be inhaling that stuff you're going to need to be drinking green tea avoiding stress making sure you eat lots of um vegetables that are in this category i've forgotten the name but they're in a, a group of uh, vegetables and also again this person making sure they have glutathione so that shows you the detoxification pathways do you want me to continue or have you lost the will to live are we okay no we're good it's fascinating Amanda. interested oh good i'm glad to hear that um, so again, we could go on to nervous system. Um, and so the Life Code GX offer um, a discount of 10% for five reports if you buy them. And um, what I've been finding, lots of people are buying them. Um, they are, it's 100 euros for the test and it's 285 per report. Um, that includes obviously all of the service that I've mentioned, which means that I feed it back to you and interpret with you. Um, and as many questions, I also give you a report. Um, but um, having five means that, because we can draw on other reports to understand each report, if that makes sense, you're probably getting an idea about how that works. One, in, one is great, more is better effectively, but not you don't need all of them. There are 11 in total. Some are just not relevant. The athlete report might not be relevant to you. The hormones report might not be relevant. It just depends what symptoms you're facing, which is why I prefer to do a consultation with people in advance so that I can help you decide which reports work best. And then you can get the best direction for your money. So 
hopefully you've heard of serotonin that's the feel good hormone um it's released it's it's produced in sunlight it's released generally as a feel good kind of factor hormone it's produced from an amino acid called tryptophan which is found in bananas and uh, turkey and you can see with this individual here that all of their genes here are down regulated pretty much apart from tph2 and all, all of these apart from tnf um tumor necrosis factor are upregulated. So this is stealing tryptophan away from the serotonin pathway. So we want to inhibit that by making sure this person is not stressed out, we, that we are downregulating their inflammation and that we're making sure they have a lot of oily fish in their diet um, or they're supplementing omega-3s if they can't stand fish, which does happen. And so again, this is downregulated. They have a risk of low mood. Um, serotonin, Again, here, this is this is the conversion. So tryptophan is turned into 5-hydroxytryptophan. Serotonin is turned into n serotonin, And then that's turned into melatonin. And here, this person will have a problem with sleep. They do, actually. Um, you can see that that's down-regulated. And they uh, supplement melatonin, actually, to get to sleep, which is an up-and-coming interesting um, thing in the world of uh, nutrition. Uh, whether that's relevant for you or not, it, it depends on your... your um, report but that just gives you an idea about what that can tell us here this again this is the dopamine pathway dopamine is that kind of relaxed chilled out feeling this person has as bad as it can get on the adrenaline receptors you can either say it's as bad or it's good depending on what you want but they're highly triggerable um, they're very quick to jump into fight or flight syndrome and so um, they also this comt and maoa they're the uh, genes that metabolize um so they detox they they um that they, they detoxify serotonin um sorry they detoxify adrenaline and dopamine um from sorry from these pathways so uh, basically what that means is that um dopamine being metabolized by maoa and compt more dopamine, if it's been produced, will stay in the system, but adrenaline will also stay in the system. So stress management is really important for this person and also making sure that they have a good amount of B6 and um, so that enough dopamine is, is produced as well. So they feel good and they don't get too stressed out. Um, again, it shows us GABA is a, a relaxing hormone, so that's um, it's downregulated here. So we would like to make sure that this person has lemon balm and uh, rosemary and thyme in their diet to make sure that they are relaxed and enough magnesium as well. So um, I've really whizzed through that, but that gives you an idea about how, you know, if you're a stressed out person um, and you've thought all of your life that actually it was because, you know, there was something wrong with you. Why do you behave like that? Seeing these reports gives you that kind of oh, you know, it's not me, it's my genes. Now I understand why. And you can have some self-compassion and realize that all this time you've just been struggling against your biology and maybe you were deficient in B6 and maybe you haven't been supplementing magnesium. Um, and all of a sudden you get this reprieve, like it's like a, it's like a, a sigh of relief. You know, you can actually fine tune your biology and finally understand why. So when you feel that trigger coming along, that Oh, I'm starting to feel anxious. Right. OK, I know what I need to do. I'm going to go and take some magnesium. I'm going to go and take some L-theanine or um, I'm going to make sure that I have a cup of green tea. Uh, that could be stimulating, but I'm going to make sure I have some cacao with ginger and uh, cinnamon because that for my pathways is calming for me. So you you end up with basically it's like biohacking. You hack your own individual biology, you know what to do, and that's it. You you know, you can move forward in life with all of these tools and uh, life gets better, which is what it's all about. So um, I'm going to stop there. There are other reports, but I could go on and on. Um, do you have any questions about any of that? I've got half an hour. Can I come around? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I will be doing more. I have done other um, I have done other webinars on other reports, um, but I think I've only covered the ones that I've just very, very quickly whizzed through with you. Um, but if you've got any ind individual questions, you can fire them over to me on Messenger or um, on WhatsApp um, or send me an email. Um, if you have any, it, for the benefit of anybody watching this recording, if you have any um, health issues and you would like to discuss them with me, um, I do 
do 15 minute free consultations, you can book in through my website, which is www.amandakingnd.com. And um, then we can have a chat about your personal situation. Um, and I do specialize in stress, gut health and the microbiome, but um, I'm dealing with patients with Parkinson's, chronic kidney disease, um, heart disease, you name it. So um, the whole range. So um, we can always have a look at whatever is happening with you and see whether we can create a plan. So if there are no more questions. <laughs> Super, Amanda, thank you for being touched. You're really welcome. Yeah, great. You're very welcome and have a lovely evening. You too. You Thanks too. a lot. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. bye.